uh, this is just some, some lapis. So that's a uh, raw lapis there. And again, this is from Afghanistan. So this would have been the raw material that they would have used for, uh, for making material. And it's uh, surrounded by, it's got a rind of this calcite on it. Um, this is, if you polished it down, uh, this is kind of what you would look, it would look like. So that's a, a polished material. Uh, you actually can't get um, uh, rough lapis out of Afghanistan anymore because uh, um, they want to keep uh, money inside the uh, country. So all material has to be polished in order for it to be exported. So that's what the, this is a, a relatively high quality lapis material. Uh, so what they would do with that is, oops, here's a, a scarab bead uh, that I have. So that's um, been carved out of lapis. Let me see if I can zoom in there. Hold on. Okay. So there you go. And it's it's drilled all the way through. Is that recent or is that old? No, this is this is old. Uh, so here's here's a piece of uh, Persian turquoise. So it's just rough. But you know everybody's used to seeing the the turquoise from the southwest, uh, but this yeah this one's this one's from Persia, and it has a lot of uh, pyrite in it, um, something that a lot of the southwest stuff doesn't really have, and it's also a lot more expensive. <laughs> um, here's a here's a piece of carnelian. So this isn't Egyptian carnelian. This is actually uh, from New Jersey, but. You know, that's just to show you what carnelian looks like in the raw. So it's just a water-worn tumbled pebble, uh, but if you get light through it, and it's got this really nice cool golden color. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's some more real artifacts. So this is a... Um, a carnelian bead from Egypt. And it's kind of rough, but again, it's like they actually drilled that hole through carnelian without the use of a Dremel. I, I find that amazing. If somebody asked me to do that, I'd be like, uh, no. Nah. <laughs> um, here's a a um, scarab that's been carved out of the steatite, which is a type of the type of um, soapstone. So this is relatively soft. There's the hieroglyphics on the back. On the back. Um, this is just a chunk of amethyst, just to represent the amethyst. And there's the faience. So this is a little um, uh, eye of Horus, or what they call a widget. I'm trying to get it. OK, there it is. So this is just a little um, bead out of the faience. And also, I do have a, uh, actually, I got to zoom out a little bit here. So I do have one of these um, Ushtabis, which is one of the, I, I call it an Egyptian action figure. <laughs> but essentially, these are, uh, they, they made these for um, the king, and they would make uh, 365 of these. Uh, one for every day of the year, and these uh, on its appointed day would come to life, 
and uh, serve the king for whatever they they need. And this is uh, this is faience. And again, this is a real artifact. Eric, how did you come by the artifacts in your collection? Uh, I have a friend who who actually uh, does a lot of collecting of uh, Egyptian material. So um, I actually defer to him when I when I get stuff. But yeah, there it's it's available. Um, the the artifacts are are um, relatively hard to get. They're not they're not easy, uh, and uh, you have to be extremely careful about. Um, Fakes and fakes and forgeries. Um, it's almost getting to the point where, uh, if you see something um, as an artifact, uh, you pretty much assume that it's fake and then prove that it's real. You can't assume that anything is real anymore because they they pretty much fake everything. Uh, but again, it's like you know collecting anything else. You you have to you know you have to know your stuff. Um, I, I don't have enough uh, information uh, to, to, to know about that stuff. So I actually defer to friends that I know that do. So, <laughs> but yeah, all the, all, this, all the artifacts that I have in my collection have been uh, authenticated. Yeah, most of, the, most of this material was, was collected um, uh, uh, from Egypt uh, back when, um, you know, back in the 1920s and stuff, uh, or even earlier. Uh, when Egypt didn't even care. I mean, it was, you know, it was just go out into the desert and pick up stuff. Uh, you know, there wasn't all the uh, legislation and stuff that you have today. Uh, so a lot of this stuff was um, from old collections and, and you know, it gets uh, bought and sold over the years. Anybody else have any uh, questions or comments? And if you do, uh, please unmute yourself before you ask the question. <laughs> thank you, Derek. So first of all, thank you very much for the presentation. A very interesting topic and great uh, pictures and explanation. Uh, I, I was uh, especially amazed with, with your uh, abilities related to sh show some of those samples um, and really managing this Zoom environment so well uh, was focusing. Uh, so at least I was able to see the details. Uh, so I appreciate okay, it. I, I think we do have questions. I, I even saw maybe at least one question in the chat. Um, in the meantime, so please, yeah, everyone, turn, turn your videos on. We could go back to talking to each other and seeing each other. Yeah, and in the meantime, I have one question. So you talked about the uh, difference between uh, lazulite, which I guess is part of uh, lapis lazuli, and azurite, and mm -hmm. how azurite converts to malachite over the years. Mm -hmm. So I guess a two-prong two question. First, can you describe a little bit more this process of uh, how azurite uh, becomes malachite over time and how long time it takes and, and what, what is the process? And secondly, what is the difference between a lazulite and azurite that makes lazulite not do that? Uh, well, 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 lazurite is a... Is a um... Uh, I'd have to look up the chemical formula, but it, it actually is, a, it, it's a stable uh, mineral. Uh, so, you know, pretty much uh, it's, it's not going to change over time. Um, uh, azurite uh, will over time um, will actually, uh, I think it has to do with uh, temperature and humidity. Um, azurite and malachite are actually very similar uh, chemically. Uh, so I think it only has to absorb a little bit of uh, 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 humidity over time and the blue will turn green. So yeah, uh, I was actually, um, uh, I actually found that out when I was uh, watching a program on uh, the restoration of the uh, Sistine Chapel. Uh, 